Hi everyone, these are 10 things I wish I knew when I was 20. Number one is chase friendships, not relationships. Now, I know it's not the case for everyone, but definitely from like 18 until 24, you know, relationships can be tricky. You know, that early dating phase where you're just trying to figure things out, you know, you're getting that dating experience. Uh, it can be tough, but the reason I say don't chase relationships over friendships is because a lot of the time relationships can be fickle. You know, you can um, you can basically be using people to kind of fill a void you have, and 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 don't do that like I did. You know, I I hopped around to several relationships very quickly. You know, very fast turnover period, and uh, it, it it didn't really do me any good. You know, essentially I realized. What I was feeling was was a deeper issue, and it couldn't be solved by another person. So, if you find yourself, you know, in the in the mindset of, you know, I have to be with another person, you know, I I, I can't be single, or I I refuse to be single, um, that's actually an indicator of, of the opposite. You you need to be single. You need to be more grounded in yourself. And um, I'm I'm telling you this now from personal experience, like. It's way better to invest that time into yourself and moreover into friendships because you know, especially after college, especially after high school, you don't want a group of exes, you want a group of friends. You want people that you've cultivated relationships with, you want people you can share experiences with, you, you need that buddy system, you need that group. Um, and, and honestly, if you, if you had to choose between, you know, being more alone or, you know, having a bunch of, you know, previous relationships, you know, it might be better to stay, you know, by yourself because then you can work on yourself, figure out your passions, you know, spend that time. Um, so it's, it's, it's more about refocusing the energy. And again, I'm not saying you can't date. Um, I, I do think this is a critical period where you, where you should date, you know, you should get a little experimental. Um, but, but do it with, with the mindset of, I'm not using other people, right? As long as you're not, as long as you don't have that mindset, as long as you're, you're genuinely in, interested in the other person and you're gonna explore things in, in as mature of a way as you can, th then it's okay. But again, if, it was, if I had to go back in time, I would definitely prioritize friendships over relationships. Number two is remove toxic people from your life. God, I wish I figured this one out from, from day one of high school. Um, seriously, if you if you find yourself in a group of friends and they're just they're just completely toxic, right? And, and a good indicator of this is when you accomplish something, do they do they kind of put you down? Is there like a strike system where it's like, no, we all have to be even, you know, no one no one can be above us. Or when you celebrate something, are they are they happy? You know, they, do they say, yeah, let's go out to a movie, or you know, let's do something, let's let's celebrate, or you know, they offer words of encouragement. It's so important to just remove toxic people from your life. And again, I'm going to go back to: is it better to maybe have a group of 20 toxic people that you have shallow friendships with, or to be by yourself with without any toxic people? And it's it's definitely better to be by yourself. You know. You, you seriously, you, it's it's hard enough at that age. It's hard enough being young, figuring things out. Um, really, really take a couple days. Think about your friends. Think about your friend group. And if your friend group is not offering you anything positive, if if you even lay out seriously, lay out the pros and cons of each of these people, and say, okay, yeah, is this someone who's a positive influence in my life, or is this someone who's more more negative? Are they always putting me down? Are are they not inviting me to events? Am, am I just the butt of every joke? You know. And, and that's not to say your friends can't joke around with you, right? But but in good taste, right? Don't don't be the victim. Don't play the victim card, right? You have all the power you need at, at any age, right? And and it's up to you to figure that out for yourself. I'm so thankful that I did. I'm so thankful that the people that I choose to be around, uh, I'm very intentional with it, and it's it's made my life a lot less stressful for sure. My third tip is don't be afraid to be vulnerable, and this is in the same sense of like. Don't take yourself too seriously. Look, uh, I know for myself, I was a little bit of a perfectionist. I was a little bit hard-headed, still kind of am, you know, still a little bit of that residue hanging over. But look, um, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, yes, I'm overwhelmed. I need assistance. I need some perspective. I was I was surprised in the moments where, uh, you know, I was vulnerable. Or I did show it a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of my weakened side. You know the friends that I had or others that were around me were, were more than willing to support you and I mean just just think of yourself you know if you're even the least bit caring and another one of your friends comes to you or someone maybe you don't even know uh, that well but they they open up to you and they say look I'm struggling with this or it's like I, I got this going on in my life like what, what would you do or you can you know can you just listen to me can you hear me out 
um, I, you know, maybe 90% of the time people are going to will, pe people are going to step up and they're going to help you. And uh, it's, it's nice to know that. It's nice to know that when you're in a vulnerable place, others, others can step up and help you. Um, and that's, that's super important if you're a perfectionist or if you struggle with, you know, doing things right every time or, you know, refusing to ask for help, you know, the lone wolf mentality. Um, you're just gonna spend so much time licking your own wounds, you're gonna forget that there's other people in the world. And you know, you know, don't do that. Don't don't purposely isolate yourself. And I know there's there's other people I know that uh, they've taken advantage of this. They've realized that yeah, most people will reach out to help you. Um, but the problem is is then they start to play the victim all the time. And that's not good either. So don't don't take this to an extreme. This is more my advice for those of you who who refuse to take help help from others who are who are a little more uh, you know, type A personality, uh, like myself, you know, it's, it's okay. There's no shame in asking for help. And, um, and it's, it's nice. It's actually good for you because it shows others that look, look at the, you know, look at Austin, right? Look at him asking for help. Wow. I thought he could do everything by himself. It, it's kind of cool that he's, you know, showing this vulnerable side of himself. That's what people might think subliminally, but it's, um, you know, if you're having a hard time connecting with others, again, choose to take the vulnerable route uh, but again don't abuse that power don't don't play the victim i know tons and tons of girls who just like they're always like oh my god you know i need help or you know i just, i can't put myself together um that's not what i'm saying do to, to that's not that's not what i'm saying to do and in fact don't don't do that it's not very mature that's not showing that you can stand on your own two feet um <laughs> definitely puts out the wrong uh the wrong vibe and uh as much as I'm willing to help out other people, I cannot stand people who abuse the power of the victim and just refuse to like, you know, live their own life. They always have to have their big support system and everyone's always, you know, coming to their aid every time they trip or, you know, they forget their keys in their house. It's like their whole world's falling apart. Uh, yeah, a lot of history with that type of individual. So don't be like that. Number four, work really hard at something consistently. Look, I know uh, when you're 20, when you're younger, you got a lot on your plate. Maybe you're still going through school or you, you got a bunch of jobs you're working. Uh, this is a very interesting skill that you could build early on. And I don't care what you're doing consistently. Um, just just do something outside of school, outside of work, and, and try to do it you know, for a month. Try to do it for two months. You know, Every single day, practice this. Whether it's drawing, whether it's reading, whether it's mastering some craft, um, something happens to you psychologically when you build up this these these habits of consistency and you know and persistence because um, it's it's really cool when you practice doing something even when you don't feel like it and that's what this is building so that's why I say it doesn't really matter what you're doing just try to work really hard at something and stick to it consistently because what that's gonna do is you know when you're later on in your life you know you don't have as much energy as when you're younger right you don't have all the feelings and that's probably what you're relying on a lot of the time is okay well i i'm, I'm feelings driven whatever i feel like doing i'm going to do uh, that's not going to be the case when you're older on you're going to have responsibilities you're going to have things to do um, and even if you don't feel like it you got to do it so what's cool about this is if you build this habit if you build up these this 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 kind of interesting skill set uh, it the transition from out of school into the workplace it won't be so hard you'll say okay well look I, I stuck to this habit for two months and I did it consistently. I got this, right? I've, I've, I've built that kind of soft skill. Um, very helpful, very cool. Um, and I wish I practiced it more when I was younger. Number five is take a genuine interest in the passions of others. Look, everyone already knows that, you know, everyone's favorite word is their own name, right? And I'm not saying you have to be a people pleaser, but what you can do is when you take an interest in someone else's hobbies, when you when you ask someone just genuine questions like, hey, why are you so into skateboarding? Like, tell me more about it. Or, hey, why, why do you like to read so much? Like, what are some of your favorite books? Uh, what you're doing is you're building the soft skill of asking good questions, asking good, insightful questions. And moreover, you're being an active listener. And that is huge, especially in today. There are not enough listeners in the world. And I'm telling you right now, if you want to succeed, if you want to get on people's good side, right? If you want to succeed in the business world, it's definitely about who you know rather than what you know. Uh, the, the nine times out of 10, that's true. And so, you know, um, take a lot of opportunities, you know, especially with your teachers, especially with your professors, right? High end individuals. I'm not saying use them for their status, but I'm just saying practice that skill. Practice the skill of being genuinely interested 
And uh, even if you don't feel like it, even if it's, you know, maybe it's like mud wrestling and you're like, well, you know, I've never really had an interest in that. Uh, practice anyways. Say, hey, you know what? What's your favorite technique? When you're grappling someone in the mud, what, what, what's going through your mind? Um, you're, you're building some very good skills and, and hopefully you'll, you'll build a passion for it like, like I have. Um, I've definitely built up those skills and I enjoy genuinely just, you know, almost interviewing people in a sense. I like to hear other people's stories. I like to hear what other people want to talk about. And the cool thing is, is a lot of the time uh, people will reciprocate that. If, if you ask someone to tell them, you know, things about their passions and things about themselves, they'll almost after sharing feel obliged to, to ask a question back and say, well, what is it you like to do, right? And, and again, that's in the sense of you're showing an interest in them, then they will show an interest in you. Uh, don't always assume people are gonna always give you that attention. So um, a very interesting thing. Uh, I definitely wish I practiced those skills when I was younger. Number six is practice healthy recovery methods. What is a recovery method? Well, a recovery method is when you're super stressed, when you're going through tough times, how do you recover? Do you do it through weed? Do you do it through alcohol? Do you do it through just like crazy amounts of junk food. Those are examples of unhealthy ways to cope with stress, right? You need healthy recovery methods and you should build them on early. So you, uh, you have that wiring in your brain where your brain goes, okay, we're stressed in this way. What are we going to go to, right? You need to build up that neurological stimulation to be positive. Well, luckily for myself, a thing I did a lot was work out. I, I ran tons of miles. I worked out a ton at the gym and that was my recovery method and it was super healthy for me and it was good because now when I'm super stressed, now when I start to feel angsty, my body almost desires to work out. It's very strange, but I, I built that up over years and years of, of just consisti consistency and like rigorous, you know, uh, mental training where I would, I would have a negative thought, I'd kind of be with my feelings for a while and then I'd say, you know what? I bet if I worked out, I'd have a clearer state of mind. And and it's totally true. Now, this is to say, uh, <laughs> you don't have to work out, right? That's not the only recovery method. But you can maybe go read a book, you can maybe go draw. Are you going to take two steps back or one step back and one step forward, right? A recovery method, uh, if it's really positive, is actually gonna bring you more forward. If it's just kind of like a survival recovery method, it's just gonna bring you back to square one. So in the sense of like drinking or drugs, it's like, okay, you're already taking a step back because your feelings are, you know, feelings are bad. You're maybe depressed. You got anxiety. Relationships are falling apart. You know, whatever it is, you know, you got those negative things going on. So that, that takes you a step back. The problem with drugs and alcohol is that's going to take you even further back from where you want to be because it's, it's not a healthy recovery method. And you know, all things in, um, all things in moderation, right? And I'm not saying you can't go out and have a few drinks with friends. I'm just saying if that's your only recovery method, you better rethink your options because that is going to lead to a very destructive lifestyle and I don't want to see you guys go down that road. Um, so no matter how easy it is for you now, no matter how much you say to yourself, oh no, no, it's okay, it's just a couple drinks, you know, it's fine, you know, it's just 13 beers every day, I got this, uh, it's not good. And it needs to stop and you really need to rethink your recovery methods. Number seven is don't be a people pleaser. All right, I'll admit it, I was a people pleaser back in the day. I would bend over backwards not to get in fights with people. I would totally take a bunch of hits just because I didn't want that drama. I'm the type of person that doesn't like conflict. I don't like direct confrontations um, at all. I'm very, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's like I like to sidetrack things or I like to like avoid the questions or maybe like um, passive aggressive. I was very passive aggressive and that's not healthy. That's not a good thing to do you shouldn't be afraid to speak your mind you shouldn't be afraid to be direct and this is a good practice you know because what people pleasers are is they might be in the same situation i am it's like you're you're thinking to yourself okay you know i i'm, I'm here to steady the waters i'm here to make sure nothing goes wrong if there's any drama it's my fault you know i'll just take the blame so the drama goes over um think of like a marriage right if these two people if every time they fight one partner just goes, you know what, nope, it's my fault, and they never have that argument. The thing is, is there's nothing wrong with having arguments. There's nothing wrong with having fights. In fact, it's a good thing. It's a healthy sign because what it is, it's basically an opportunity for growth. So in the same sense for friendships, anytime there's a fight, anytime there's conflict, 
it's not that this person's right, the other person's wrong, right? And, and maybe a meta sense that might be right, but what's really happening is there's just there's just a little bit of a disconnect. You know, there's, there's something, whether it's being said or not said, or maybe another person's doing something, uh, and it could be very minor, um, but to deny people that conflict resolution, to deny people those skills of maybe not necessarily having a fight, maybe more of a heated discussion, right? Um, it's, it's, it's not good. We have a whole spectrum of feelings, and anger is one of them. And anger and frustration are, are very important. And in fact, our society just looks at it in a wrong way. Like we're all like, oh my God, yeah, you should be, you should be happy all the time. What? You're, you're not happy 24/7. What? You don't, you know, shit butterflies and smile rainbows. God, what's, what the fuck's wrong with you, right? Well, that's not the case, right? People get angry. People get frustrated. Even the most mellow-minded person, even Buddha probably got frustrated at some point. Maybe not, but you know what I'm saying? And it's like, so don't deny those feelings, right? You're feeling them for a reason, and then use other people to explore that. Because oftentimes, we don't even know what's wrong with ourselves. Like, we're very complicated as it is, and it's not until sometimes you have that argument, or you, you get out all those words, and you say what's wrong with you, that you finally, you get your head clear, and you're like, oh my god, like, I finally, I finally understand what's wrong. It's, it's, it's not you, it's me. You know, I got, I got some personal problems, or, or, you know, my grandma died the other day. Like, all of a sudden, it, it, it reveals itself to you. It's, it's very good to just let that happen. And so in the sense of being a people pleaser, it's another, another way I'm saying, you know, don't avoid conflict. Don't avoid those opportunities um, because it's, it's not about it, it negatively reflects on you or anyone else. It's all about, look, there's now an opportunity for growth in this group and, and we, should, we should explore that. We need to work through it together and we need to build those conflict resolution skills. And uh, if you're a people pleaser, you're just constantly avoiding that. You're just constantly doing the will of others. And, and that's not good. No one is the lackey of anyone else. You're your own master, okay? This is your ship, your destination, where you want to go, not up to anyone else's decision, okay? Not anyone else's, it's your decision. Number eight is read more. This one is pretty obvious, right? I'm sure you've heard it already from your parents. I'm sure you heard it from your teachers. Well, it's true right? This is how you build your knowledge. This is how you become a better conversationalist. This is how you increase your vocabulary. This is how you think creatively. Like, it's not even funny how important reading is and how important it is for you and your success. Uh, whether you're going to read, you know, self-help books, whether you're going to read books on relationships, fantasy fiction, you know, and that's the thing. It doesn't really matter what it is. Like, honestly, I mean, if you want to just read children's books a bunch, I mean, at least you're reading something, but like, you know, figure out what level you're at and then, you know, pick out a few books in that section, right? Pick, pick out whatever it is and then, you know, kind of do it consistently, kind of do it every now and then. Uh, it's, it's very, very helpful and it's a good way to get that, um, it's just a good way to digest a bunch of different, you know, perspectives, a bunch of different knowledge. Now, if you don't really enjoy reading, I mean, audiobooks, podcasts, also very helpful. Also another way to just kind of consistently learn something. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely wish I, I, I built up that habit. I did those things when I was younger. Now that I've, you know, read a decent amount, I've built up those skills. You know, it's not as painful for me as it used to be. I actually, I quite enjoy it. I like learning new things. So um, explore that. Try to read more if you can. I feel like I shouldn't even have to explain myself on that one. Number nine is discover what makes you happy and see if you can make money from it. Look, it's it's not that hard, you know? Examine your life and figure out what brings you the most joy. Now, if it's playing video games, guess what? There's still an option for that. There's still a massive business in video games. So if that's your passion, if that's what you like, you can use that. Uh, tons of companies want gamer perspectives. Tons of companies are hiring out gamers to, to be their streamers, to be their brand ambassadors, to, to interview them, to do game testing. You know, if, if that's what you're passionate about, go into that field, why not, right? If, you, if you're passionate about sports, check out your local sports team, check out, you know, being an announcer, check out being a videographer, right? Whatever it is, discover what makes you happy and then see if you can make money from it. That's There's a reason why you consistently do that thing you do. There's a reason why you get so much joy from it. And then see if you can, you know, make a job out of it, make a career out of it. I mean, why not? I feel like a lot of the time, it's like, you don't know what your job will be. Well, it's like, you could start with your passions. It's okay to start with your passions. 
Um, now that might not be the most practical advice for some people. I, I don't know if like your passion is skydiving, like then you can be a skydiving instructor. But if you literally think about almost anything and you think about what you spend most of your time doing, there's probably a business behind that. There's probably some people maybe in your network, maybe your parents know them, they can introduce you and you can see if that's the field for you. Um, I wish I knew that earlier on. I wish I knew it was so easy. Um, my passion was always in creativity, you know, making videos, you know, and so I finally realized that marketing was for me, advertising firms. Why? Because it's project based, because things are changing constantly. Where do I want to do it? In the video game market. So I landed a job in the video game market and now I'm going to be helping companies with their like promotional campaigns, their ads, and I'm super jazzed about it. I'm super excited about it. And I just wish I figured that out earlier on. Like it seems really obvious and it's almost like I had, discover, I had to discover it for myself. Um, but if I can save you guys the time, if I can save you the trouble, uh, start with that. See if, see if that's actually plausible for you to make a career out of what you love to do. That's basically it. My last piece of advice is don't be ashamed of being alone. Now, I don't know what stage in your life you're at, whether you just got out of a relationship, maybe you, you know, discounted some of your friends and now you're feeling alone. Maybe you've never really had any friends. Maybe for whatever reason, you just haven't really connected with people. You know, maybe you live in a town of like three people and the other two people are best friends and you're just hanging out, right? Uh, there's no shame to be had because a, a lot of it's out of your control, right? A lot of it's you just haven't met the right people. Um, and so definitely explore yourself, find out your passions, you know, in, enjoy being alone. Take that time to work on whatever you want to do, um, but don't don't spend so much energy focused on yourself focused on in the sense of like i feel sorry for myself right like that's bad energy being used good energy is like okay well what can i do with this time you know i have a lot of downtime what should i do what should i explore you know how can i improve myself right those are positive questions you should be asking yourself those are going to project you in a way you know 10 years 20 years from now like those positive thoughts are going to be what makes you successful um and again, you know, people's personalities are so different. Everyone is so unique already. You already know it. Basically, don't be ashamed to be alone. The fault is not yours entirely, right? I'm not saying, you know, you can't take any of the blame. Not that there's any blame to go around, right? There's nothing wrong with you being alone, you doing your own thing. I don't want anyone to be ashamed about that because it's just not the case. It's not the case because you're you're just choosing maybe not to have friends or rather maybe people just don't get on with you because you're just so unique. You know, I don't know exactly what it is. All I'm saying is if you find yourself alone a lot, if you find yourself in a position where now you're alone, you feel a little afraid, um, you know, find comfort in yourself, maybe practice some meditation, look up some psychological, you know, self-help. Uh, there's a big world out there and you should at least give yourself a chance and you should definitely not feel shame for just being alone. That's it. All right, so those are my 10 tips that I wish I knew when I was 20. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you are, you know, older than 26 and you want to offer some advice for people who are 20, 18. Uh, what would you say? What is what are some things you would say? Uh, go ahead and say them down in the comments. Uh, otherwise, give this video a like. Feel free to share it with uh, people who are younger than myself. And uh, I hope you all have a great new year. Uh, let's have a good 2020.